Hi guys, it's March 6, 2015, and I'm finishing up getting ready to go because my flight leaves tomorrow to Atlanta. But before I head out, I want to do a gear review video just to show you everything that I am bringing, kind of a what's in my pack video, so to speak. I just want to make a little disclaimer before I start going through my pack that I am no expert. And the reason that I'm starting with this post is to kind of allow you to see exactly how my pack evolves and gets lighter as I go along. And I'm happy to take your um, tips and suggestions about what I should change. And I'm sure that I'm going to end up um, ditching some luxury items that I have and sending some home. But I still think it's a useful exercise so you can see what a person starts with when they through hike and what a person ends with at the end and the weight differential that there is between the beginning and the end. Also, I want to be clear that I did not get paid or get a sponsorship for any item that I have. These are all purchased from my own money. I researched what people thought was the best options for backpacking gear and chose accordingly and chose what I thought would be the best items for me. So my pack is full with items that I personally have faith in and not that sponsored by anyone. I know that's an issue sometimes with YouTube. Without further ado, here's my pack. Okay, let's start with my clothes that I'm planning to wear. So as you can see, I have two outfits and a pair of long underwear that I plan to primarily wear. So I'll start with my warm weather outfit. It's right here, it's just a tank top and um, a pair of running shorts that are really quite light. I think they're going to be super comfortable. I have worn them before. And then I've heard in summer that bicycle shorts are a good choice for chafing and also for swimming. So I am bringing a pair because I thought that it would be a good option. And then for the outfit that I'm starting with, I have this Under Armour Moisture Roiking shirt, which we treated with permethrin yesterday, so it should give me some protection against insects and ticks, especially. And then these pants, which are like looser running pants from ASICS. I really like these. They're super comfortable, and I think that I'm really going to enjoy wearing them in like all weather conditions. And then for sleeping, um, I have this um, pair of long johns that I'm planning to keep in my dry bag unless it's like absolutely urgent that I use them like it's really really cold and for slightly colder weather when hiking I have this Columbia fleece it buttons down halfway but it's just a pullover which I like better than a zip I know a lot of people like going commando while backpacking, but that's not my personal preference, especially on my period, but just in general. So I'm bringing two pairs of these ex officio underwear that are supposed to be good and travel well when, you know, you can't wash them every day. So I think that two pairs is going to be plenty. For sports bras, I really like champion, so I just have two champion bras that I plan to alternate. And just have an alternate one in case one gets wet or I need to swim in it or whatever. As far as socks, I know those are a super important part of your wardrobe. I have experimented with different kinds of socks. I've tried some different heights of wigwams and stuff. And I settled on these darn tough socks. They're nice in that they don't go super high. So they won't get as hot in the summer. But they're also nice merino wool. And... They're really good quality and they're guaranteed for life, which is awesome. I also have read that you get fewer blisters and stuff if you use liner socks. So I've been experimenting with these in Gingy socks. Um, and I like them um, more than I expected. I didn't think that they would be so nice, but actually they really hold your feet kind of in place. And now I think... I'm kind of addicted to how much less my foot slides around when I'm wearing the liner socks. They're toe socks, and one thing I worry about a little bit is I know that you're supposed to take off your socks and air out your feet as much as possible on the trail, and I'm a little worried that the Injinjis are going to take a long time to get on and off, but I think that 
it'll be worth it in the reduction of blisters. Like I've used them for probably, I've used them for a ways and haven't had any problems so far with blisters, which is great. Um, so I'm excited for these. As far as camp shoes go, I really hate thong sandals and I just wanted something really light and um, visible in all weather. So I got these brightly colored generic Crocs from Amazon and they seem to be okay. They're a little bit like not the best quality, but for a couple bucks, I think that it's worth it to have shoes to change out of your walking shoes and have a little more space to move. The only thing about these, I had to order them about two sizes up because they run super small. As far as sun protection, once the weather's warm enough not to have to wear a fleece hat, which I'm hoping I won't have to wear too much of, but I'm bringing along and I'll show you later when I'm showing you my rain gear and my cold weather gear, I have this ball cap. Um, it's just a generic ball cap, but I think it'll be easier to cart around and it's pretty lightweight so I'm hoping that this will be good for sun protection when it's necessary. Because I'm planning on wearing my glasses for the vast majority of my hike I'm bringing an eyeglass retainer just so that I have something to kind of keep them on when I'm sweating because I know they tend to slide down my nose when I don't. So these it's nothing fancy and it kind of gives me a little bit of a headache sometimes so I'm not sure how it's going to work out but it works so far. I've tried it on a few hikes and it really does keep my glasses up better. I know it's really important to keep your clothes dry in wet weather so I just wanted to show you what I'm going to put my clothes in. It's a dry bag from Outdoor Research. It's 10 liters and it fits everything into it pretty easily and nicely so that's my plan to keep everything kind of dry and together when I'm not wearing it so that I don't get hypothermia. My tent is in this bag. It's a tarp tent contrail. It's pretty lightweight. It's a couple pounds, but I have about four extra stakes for it just to make it more stable. So um, it is a little heavier than it normally would be. And I like it. It doesn't add a lot of weight to my pack, which is nice. And it's pretty compact. So. I wanted a tent because I like the slightly greater privacy that the tent has and I'm not a big fan of rodents so I might be staying away from the shelters especially at the beginning of the trail where it's crowded. So that's my tent. This is my sleeping pad. It's the Thermarest Pro Light. It's pretty light which is nice. Um, it. I don't really want to get it out because I have to roll it up again but it's a pretty comfortable for the weight. And I wanted an inflatable sleeping pad instead of a just foam sleeping pad because I think they're more comfortable. So this is what I went with, and I'm pretty happy. In this compression sack is my big Agnes Roxy sleeping bag. I kind of regret buying this particular item because it's a little heavier than I anticipated. It's a 20 degree bag, and I thought it was less than two pounds, but it's actually about three when I actually got it. Um, so I'm not thrilled about it, but I think that it's going to be fine for the first little bit of the hike. And I plan to switch to a 40 degree bag when it gets uh, warmer. And I also have inside my sleeping bag a silk liner to keep the sleeping bag itself cleaner and from smelling too bad, and then I'll just wash that as I go. For my food bag, I have a 13 liter Sea to Summit dry bag that I'm using and it's already packed with a lot of the food that we're going to be using. I'm planning on bear bagging um, pretty regularly. We'll see how that changes. I know a lot of people don't end up doing that. I just really don't want to attract mice um, as much as I can avoid it. To go with the food bag, I have 50 feet of paracord, which I plan to use for a variety of different purposes, like um, hanging the food bag, obviously, but also for my umbrella and different things like that, attaching that to my pack. All right, here's a luxury item that I learned I should bring from YouTube. It's a Thermarest Z-Seat. Um, Terry Coyle has a video about gear and he suggested that you bring a seat with you and I was looking for a really lightweight seat and this is just a couple ounces and it's gonna fit pretty easily on top of my pack. So I'm pretty happy with this. My cooking system is the Jet Boil Flash. 
Originally, I was going to go with the Snow Peak Giga, which is a little lighter, but my dad recommended this really strongly because he really swears by it, so I decided to go with this instead. Um, and I think that it's going to be pretty efficient since it boils water really quickly. This is the rest of my cooking setup. I have just a plastic bowl from Rubbermaid and then a cup and a titanium spork which I have used a few times and I'm not crazy about but it'll be fine and then here is my handkerchief for cooking. I was thinking initially about getting collapsible um, cooking ware but I just didn't order it in time and so it's just going to take up a little bit of space but I'm planning to keep like my instant coffee in here or something maybe my cocoa powder just to have some more space in my pack. Okay, here's my cold weather gear. I have this puffer coat, which fits pretty easily into that nice little stuff sack, so it compresses down really easily. It's a Outdoor Research Aria coat, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and then I have these lightweight liner gloves that are nice because they have touch fingers. They're not perfect, but they work pretty well. And I have a nice fleece hat, um, which... I will hopefully not be wearing too much of, but I probably will end up wearing sometimes and just want to have just in case. And then my favorite thing, um, which really keeps my face warm when it's cold out, the balaclava, um, which my mom keeps mistaking for underwear because it's kind of like lightweight. It looks kind of like granny panties, but um, it's really nice. I am a big fan of balaclava. I hadn't tried it before this one, but it works really well. It keeps my face super warm in the cold. The only bad thing is it fogs up my glasses pretty easily. This is my rain gear and also it'll work pretty well for wind protection. Um, I have a yellow coat from Outdoor Research which I'm pretty happy with so far. Um, rain pants from Frog Togs which are already slightly ripped but and they also make this really interesting sound when I walk but they work pretty well. They're pretty comfortable and they're easy to get on so that's great. And then these heavy overgloves which I'm not I'm not sure that I'm going to end up holding on to these for too long, but I mean, the first week it's supposed to rain every day, so I'm going to have them in my pack for now, just in case. This is the item I'm really questioning. It's a trekking umbrella, and it's really light. It's about, I think, eight ounces, but it's just, I'm not sure. I want to have a head protection because, especially with my glasses, I think it's going to be obnoxious to... Um, be getting rained on and having your eyes all foggy and not able to see very well but at the same time like I'm not sure if it's worth the extra weight and it doesn't compress very well so it's just kind of huge I was kind of convinced to buy it because I looked at Wired's gear review and she said like she loved it and I've seen a lot of um, bloggers talking about how much they love them but we'll see I mean the first week's really going to test how well this works and how well the hands-free techniques that I see YouTube videos about, I can link the best one below, um, how well those actually work out for me in reality in the forest. For my headlamp, I'm using a Lumi Lumen, which I've read good reviews about. It also has the red light, which everyone recommends in case you're shelter sleeping and you need to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom or something so you're not waking everyone else up. Um, so... It seems to work well so far. I haven't used it that much yet, but it has its batteries in it, and I'm planning to bring an extra pack just in case. For water purification, I'm planning on using Aquamira to treat my water. Um, I know that it's a pretty tried and true method. I was going back and forth about whether I should use this or something that can treat um, more ga gallons since it only treats up to 30 gallons, like... Um, but I thought that this was ultimately the best decision since it's so lightweight and easy. This is my electronics bag. It's a lot later in the day now. I have had to do some errands in the last couple hours, so I haven't had time to make the rest of this video. So um, you might notice that my electronics are quite extensive, um, and I agree. I am wondering what I'm going to end up cutting down on. Um, but so far I just didn't want to part with anything that I had. 
So this is the camera that I'm primarily going to use for recording. It's a Garmin Verb, just a basic Garmin Verb. They're on super sale right now on Amazon, so I thought it would be a good choice. I have a um, stick pick as the attachment. Um, it I have lucky poles, and it attaches okay, but it's not great. So I'm not thrilled about this. It the video quality is good, but the viewfinder is kind of poor quality and also it's the main issue is that it's heavy. So I'm not sure about the quality of a GoPro, but I don't think that this was maybe the right choice over a GoPro. I chose it because it was a little cheaper, but um, maybe a GoPro Hero would have been a better choice. So that's something to think about. The next thing that I have is definitely a luxury item that I had read about on walking with wired's blog and she kind of inspired me to get it it's a charge splitter so a lighter charge splitter i can have four usbs charging it out of one socket and i thought that would be really helpful especially if i'm traveling with other people just to have something to um be able to charge multiple devices at once since sockets may be limited in towns and i don't want to i have so many devices um, these are my Sansa clips. They're both very light, so I thought I'd bring two just so that I had two days worth of charge. They both have micro SD cards in them right now with a bunch of audiobooks, most of which I downloaded from my library card. So thank you very much to the public library. It's a great resource, um, and it's going to provide me a lot of entertainment. The only thing that I'm a little unhappy about is that you can't return audiobooks on OverDrive. It doesn't seem like before the due date. So if anyone knows a way to do that on your on your Android phone, I'd appreciate the solution. This is my on-the-go micro USB, mini USB cable, and it's intended to take videos from my Verb and put them on YouTube using my Android LG G3 phone, and also to put podcasts and um, new audiobooks onto my Sansa Clips. Um, it works pretty well so far. It is a pretty good quality device, it seems like. This is my external battery. It's an anchor, and it has two ports, so you can charge two items at once, which is really nice. It's a little bit heavy, um, and I was thinking about returning it for something lighter, but in the end, I guess the convenience of having it outweighed the weight for now, so we'll see how this works. This is my Kindle Paperwhite. It has a case just to keep it protected, but it's already a used one, so it's kind of scratched up anyway. I thought this would be easier um, to have a bunch of books than to have a single paperback. And so far, I'm really happy with the choice. It's very lightweight and convenient, but we'll see how it holds up when I'm walking with it every day. I'm carrying all my electronics in a 2-liter Sea to Summit dry bag and I'm also going to put them all probably in a Ziploc bag so that they have three levels of protection. The next thing that I want to talk about is my toiletry bag. It has a lot of stuff in it but here is the contents and as you can see um, there's a lot of different things so I'll go through each one and show you what it is. This is what I primarily plan to use for my periods. It's not a diva cup, it's a schoon cup which is supposed to be like softer and more pliable than a diva cup. Um, I've never used a Diva Cup, so I can't say, but I just thought that it would be good to have this um, so that I don't have to pack out tampons throughout my hike. It'll make it easier to have less waste and neater. The thing that I'm mainly worried about is cleaning this on the go, which I guess I'll figure out as it happens, but because, um, I mean, I've never really used it in this kind of situation, but a lot of people swear by um, these while backpacking, so I think that it'll be okay. Here are some of my tools. I have a nail clippers, which is essential, obviously. Um, a Swiss Army knife, and it has also, um, a, I made sure that it had a corkscrew and a can opener and a bottle opener on it, just so that, you know, I have all the bases covered for like food and whatever. And then I have a tweezers, which I'm primarily probably going to use for um, uh, ticks, but 
Also, maybe for my eyebrows. I thought about whether or not I should bring some kind of razor, but I just don't think that it's worth the extra weight that it's going to require. And I'm blonde, and I honestly don't mind not shaving for a little bit and then just worrying about it in town. Like, I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue if I have a little bit of hair on my legs. Um, I was going back and forth about whether I want to wear glasses or contacts. I'm planning on primarily wearing glasses, but I want to have contacts just in case weather conditions make it so that contacts are easier. Obviously, when it's wet outside, um, glasses can be a pain, or when it's really humid and your glasses get all foggy, I just don't want to have to deal with that all the time. So I thought sometimes um, having these pairs of contacts would be beneficial. And I also have this contact solution. It's a little bigger than I had wanted. I couldn't find like a one ounce size, so hopefully along the trail maybe I can find something a little smaller. Alright, this is going to be hand sanitizer that I'm going to use before I eat and after I go to the bathroom. I just think this is good to have with all the population on the trail. You know, it's easy to catch something, so having this is a really good idea. Although I've heard it doesn't prevent everything on the trail, but hopefully filtering my water and using this will keep me healthier. I'm pretty worried about tick-borne illness or vector-borne disease generally, also like mosquito-borne illness. I've heard of people who got Lyme disease or West Nile and I really don't want either. And I know that there's that new vector illness that was in Kansas or whatever. So I have this and also we treated our clothes with permethrin um, so that when I start I will have some protection from ticks. Even though you're in the woods and you're dirty, I personally am a big fan of good dental hygiene, so I'm bringing a toothpaste and a toothbrush and floss, but I don't have those out yet, my toothbrush or my floss, so I need to get them. So this is the last bag. I just want to cover up my prescription bottle because I don't really think you need to see it. And also I have a couple pairs of earplugs to start and also some caffeine, so just in case I'm prepared. One last thing to show you before I show you my completely packed pack is what I'm using to store my um, ID cards and credit cards and stuff. It's this uh, lightweight nylon wallet um, that I just got. It's just basic. So um, I didn't really think about this till the last minute, so it's kind of a last minute purchase. But I think it'll work fine for my purposes. So I finished putting everything into my ULA circuit, my pack, and it's all packed up for the airport right now. You'll notice there's nothing hanging off of it, which is because I just don't want to have to deal with um, TSA, like, accidentally ripping something off or something. So my tent, the tarp tent, is on top, but everything else is inside. Miraculously, it all fits. Um... The only other thing that I didn't show you is I have Lecky Yanu poles and I couldn't show you those because we have them stored away, but um, I'm sure you'll see them eventually if you continue watching. So please let me know what you think and please, by all means, tell me what you think the first piece of gear that I'll drop will be and what I'll be sending home by the Smokies. I'd like your input. I'd like your input. I'm going to find out what works for me too.